Today on Joe's Geek Show, we're going to be talking about the Flash 2021 Annual. What's going on and welcome to Joe's Geek Show, the video series where we talk comics. And if you're new and like to support the channel, you can do so by hitting that like button, clicking that subscribe button, and sharing. And with that, well, we've arrived at the end of the first story arc under the Jeremy Adams Flash run. Did he stick the landing? Let's find out. Written by Jeremy Adams with our by Fernando Pizarro and Brennan Peterson, colors by Michael Lute and Hi-Fi, and letters by Steve Wands. And the story picks up with Wally West finding the source of the Speed Force's problems and promptly dislodges the anomaly before ending up in his own body, specifically returning to the critical moment in Heroes in Crisis, where everyone died. With the moment frozen in place, Wally comes to the realization that it truly wasn't his fault as the exertion of energy came from the Speed Force's issues. It's then Wally is approached by Roy Harper, where Wally explains everything, including what is about to happen. On the other side, with Barry, Oliver is distraught at Roy's voice and begs Barry to save his boy, which Barry makes a passing reference to Flashpoint, meaning he can't. It's then Mr. Terrific picks up unusual readings with Barry noticing that his powers are fading. At the same time, a dark cloud approaches Wally and Roy with the reveal that the anomaly in the Speed Force was actually Savitar, who had been absorbing the Speed Force to become its physical embodiment. Wally immediately tries to stop him, but is outmatched by Savitar's newfound speed, at which time Roy shoots an arrow that hits the evil speedster with a flash of light. Savitar continues to suck up the Speed Force and tells Wally and Roy how he came to be in the Speed Force in the first place, being after the events of Flash Reaper. It's then that Mr. Terrific comes up with a plan, but for it to work, Wally will need to pop the bubble and let the Heroes in Crisis event play out. Wally and Roy have a heart-to-heart, -heart, with Roy saying that this is part of the job, and if Wally succeeds, then they didn't die for nothing. Roy then speaks to Ollie via Wally's comms, thanking him for being such a great dad, and then shoots an arrow, which pops the bubble. This creates an explosion which shoots both Wally and Savitar out of the time stream into the present. With the Justice League now there, Superman battles with Savitar, but the villain is too quick. Barry then hands Wally a flash ring before being held up by Savitar, as he was the one to send Savitar to the dark in the previous timeline. There's a sudden whoosh, and Savitar now faces Wally, having doned the classical Flash costume and becoming a conduit for the Speed Force. Wally strikes with precision and speed, even allowing Savitar a head start, to which he easily catches up to and takes away the evil speedster's powers. Savitar is then sucked back into the dark where he'd come from, leading to Wally telling Barry that he needs to be the Flash because it's important. He's then informed by Mr. Terrific that there's an excess amount of energy in him, but Wally says they'll deal with it. Green Arrow apologizes to Wally before cutting to later where Wally reunites with his family, ending the issue on a shot of Wally racing towards a brighter future. And on the surface, it's okay, because really, this is the story that I've been wanting for the last four issues. One where Wally overcomes his grief, rediscovers what it means to be a hero, becomes the Flash, and saves the day on top of some interesting connections to past Flash stories, particularly the Flash Rebirth. As in that story, Barry had temporarily become the Black Flash, had touched Savitar, which sent Savitar to the dark place that, you know, kicked off the events that would lead him into the Speed Force, and eventually here. And with yet another retcon to Heroes in Crisis, all's well that ends well, right? Because one of the problems that I have with this story is that within the context of the previous four issues, this is the only one that really matters. I mean, over the course of the previous issues, we've effectively been treated to the Wally West TV series. Sometimes like a cartoon, sometimes like a sitcom, but primarily played up for laughs. Yes, Wally is still doing good by fixing all of the uh, Speed Force anomalies, but over the course of those four issues, there's no change in his character. From the first to the fourth, he says throughout that he is retiring. So despite what he's going through, nothing is really changing his mind. So all of a sudden, we've got four stories with no real character growth and a comedic tone, and suddenly we take a hard shift to tons of character growth and a more dramatic tone. In a way, it almost feels like reading two different stories which ends up creating a bit of a disconnect, which is what I was afraid of, because I feel that this character development is more manufactured rather than organic. And in retrospect, as I started to examine these five issues, I came to a realization, we've already had this story with Flash Forward. 
Don't Believe Me? A story about Wally wanting to quit being the Flash before being thrust through time and space, visiting different places to stop an anomaly from destroying everything, where he reconnects eventually with Roy Harper, only to watch him die again, but is emotionally stronger this time, overcoming his guilt after realizing some cosmic force was trying to teach him a lesson, at which he reconnects with his family and continues his heroic path. The only difference between that story and this story is that he is completely absolved of his guilt and any wrongdoing. Because as this story points out, the entire Heroes in Crisis event was not his fault. And while it was an emotional moment for Wally, it also tells us that he had to be completely absolved of his guilt if he ever wanted to be the Flash again. Meaning, if he found out that he was still indeed guilty of killing everybody, he most likely would have retired because it was the singular moment of finding out that he was not responsible which effectively led to him deciding okay you know i can do the flash thing again i can be a hero which in the long run makes wally look weaker not stronger also this reveal of savitar being responsible for this particular event was a little odd to say the least because now we have a retcon on top of another retcon because if we recall back to Joshua Williamson's Flash run, Reverse Flash had told Barry that he essentially orchestrated the whole thing with Wally, constantly whispering in his ear, causing self-doubt, which eventually led to Wally's complete breakdown and eruption. But this story presents that Savitar was inside the Speed Force the whole time, sucking it up, and the Speed Force was trying to kick Savitar out, which was causing all of the different anomalies around, you know, the Omniverse thus telling both Wally and us that the Heroes in Crisis thing was going to happen no matter what. Also, we finally understand why Green Arrow is in the story. It's so he could find out that Wally did not actually kill Roy and he could give him a hug and say he was sorry. Wow, such a powerful moment from two characters that barely said a word to each other for the duration of this entire story. But for real, Green Arrow really did not need to be in this story. I mean, the entire story could have played out. They could have found out Wally was innocent and then just given Green Arrow a phone call saying, hey, Wally didn't kill Roy. You can stop hating him now. Heck, you could end it right there and then pick up with the Green Arrow story where Green Arrow finds out that Roy is alive because Roy is alive because we found out in Infinite Frontier. And let's give it up to Batman for coming into the story and also doing absolutely nothing, not even saying any lines. Because at one point, Barry thought he might need the Justice League and is like, hey, quick, Justice League backup. Superman and Batman showed up where Superman does battle with Savitar and, you know, gets completely beaten. Batman just sort of stands there. And I know you're telling yourself that, no, Batman didn't get involved there because you have a bunch of super powered people and he just can't stack up to that. But that's not the real reason. The real reason is because he's Batman. I'm sorry, I just thought it was funny. I mean, he literally showed up, much like Green Arrow, to do absolutely nothing. As far as the art goes, it's been pretty decent throughout this entire story with some exceptions. Particularly all of the Barry Oliver and Mr. Terrific segments where there have been some really weird choices with angles and extremely heavy on the shadow. With the Heroes in Crisis Wally segment, there were some times where Wally had some weird sort of facial expressions, particularly where he's talking to the camera on the first page. But the action sequences were all around entertaining throughout the entire book and provided an interesting visual experience. So to sum it up, on the surface, once again, it's not bad. I think the casual comic book reader is going to pick this up. I think they're really going to like it. I think a lot of people are going to like the idea of Wally not having killed anybody during Heroes in Crisis. But when combined with the other four issues and the Flash lore as a whole, the story does seem kind of clunky on top of it more or less being a rehash of Flash Forward. And with that, I'm going to score the Flash 2021 Annual a 5 out of 10. So the Flash 2021 Annual, what did you think about this book? If you've read it, I would love to hear your thoughts. Please leave your comments in the comment section below. And if you liked this video, I'd love it if you'd smash that like button, share it with some friends, subscribe if you're not subscribed already, and ring that notification bell for more comic book content. And if you're wondering what to watch next, consider one of these two videos. All right, take care, have a great day, and as always, stay geeky.